Tyler shot dead at home in Fraser's content, St. Catherine. The St. Catherine North Police were investigating the shooting murder of a 37-year-old man in the community of Fraser's content in the parish on Sunday. Dead is Sheldon Reed, a Tyler of Longwood Crescent in the area. The police report that about 3 p.m., Reed was at home and explosions were heard. The police were summoned and they found Reed with gunshot injuries to his upper body. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch is investigating. In recent times, the Fraser's content has figured prominently on the police crime reports. Taxi strike roadblock disrupts St. Elizabeth School. Exams at Hampton School in St. Elizabeth scheduled for Monday were postponed until Tuesday following a roadblock and taxi strike. Principal Charlton Brown told reporters that the students were affected. We would have, have been impacted in terms of attendance because our routes, especially in Santa Cruz to Maverin Lake of the Journey, were blocked in several places. We had a substantial number of students who were still able to come to school, especially those coming from other ends, South Junction, so we had regular school, she stated. We would have been starting internal exams for the 10th graders. We would just postpone those exams. Students who have not turned up would not be at disadvantage. We have pushed back our internal exam by a day, hoping that there will be no more disruptions tomorrow, she stated. She said, while some external exams ended on Friday, six form students are still sitting exams. They are still doing CAPE. We had two subjects today, and we had to make special plans for some of the students. We had one student who just could not make her way here for her account unit one CAPE exam, she stated. She explained that the students sat the exam at the St. Elizabeth Technical High School in Santa Cruz. We also had another student who needed to get here to do her afternoon exam, but there was no center near her available to facilitate her, so we had to send a driver to pick her up and deliver her here, she stated. Commuters Island Wild were left stranded on Monday following industrial action by several tax operators. This follows a meeting last Wednesday between stakeholders and the Island Traffic Authority about potentially reinstating driver's license suspensions due to accumulated demerit points. Transport Minister Darrell Voss has scheduled a meeting for today to discuss public passenger operators' issues with the suspension of license. Some Clarendon schools go virtual amid protests by transport operators. Several schools in Clarendon have transitioned to virtual classes due to a withdrawal of services by some public transport operators. There are reports of disruptions in St. Andrew, Portland, St. Mary, St. Thomas, St. Anne and Trelawney. Late Sunday, Denby High School issued a statement advising that classes for grades 7 to 10 will be held online. Neighboring school Glenmore High announced it would be hosting regular classes, but for those students who may have challenges getting to and from school, we will facilitate them online. Foundation Proprietary School, also in Maypen, said it would move classes online on Monday until further notice. The safety and accessibility of our students and staff are our top priorities, the school stated. Some commuters have also complained about a fear hike by some operators who are not participating in the strike. In a statement, Deputy Superintendent Owen Brown, the Clarendon Police Division's territorial officer, said the anticipated action by taxi operators would significantly impact transportation services, potentially preventing many students and teachers from attending school and returning home. Like the Jamaica Constabulary Force, he urged parents and students to implement contingency arrangements. The safety and well-being of our community, especially our students and educators, are at utmost important to us. We would also like to ensure that our students continue to enjoy their right to education in a safe manner, Brown stated. Operators are upset that the implementation of the automatic suspension of license thus accumulates a certain number of demerit points from traffic violations. They have threatened to withdraw their services starting as early as yesterday Monday morning and extending it until Wednesday. Some groups, including Mr. Newman, led Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services are against the protests. Under the 2018 Road Traffic Act, losing 10 points could result in license being suspended for six months. Following a meeting of the National Road Safety Council in May, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the new ticketing system will be rolled out in June. Call made for late Constable Carter Fairclough to be given posthumous medal of honor for gallantry. 
the Police Federation has called for a posthumous National Medal of Honor for Gallantry to be bestowed on the late Constable Ricardo. The call was made by Chairman Sergeant Arlene McBean at the funeral service for Fairclough at the Ortrius Baptist Church in St. Anne. Fairclough was killed in April when he intervened in a robbery in St. Anne's Bay. Sergeant McBean described him as a hard-working man of God who was dedicated to nation building. I want to use this symbolic platform at the Thanksgiving service of the late Constable Ricardo Nicholas Fairclough to thank you for lending support and for giving him to the citizens of Jamaica. And as they continue to stand, I'm happy, Minister Samuda. I'm seeing Minister Main and others here. I'm not going to ask you to stand. You know, Dr. Blake, we negotiate everywhere. But this is the dress or better dress we want to see when the advocacy from the Federation is heard loud and clear that a man who sacrificed his life to save a citizen, we must see his wife and daughters walking along King's House, getting a post Boomer's Award, Medal of Gallantry, and I hope a post Boomer's Medal of Gallantry will be given to his wife. She's here. So the numbers can be given by CSS. The information can be given by the Federation and we anxiously await to be a part of the audience to see that the blood, sweat and sacrifice was not in vain. Pushback on prostitution. Police in Falmouth, Trelawney have linked three murders committed between January and June 1 this year to a flourishing illicit sex trade in Falmouth. While conceding that there is more work to be done, the cops say they have been making headways in curbing these activities. There have been 12 murders in Trelawney so far this year, three more than the corresponding period last year. Since the start of the year, there have been three deaths that we can link to the net activities, stated Commander of Trelawney Police Division, Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton. He was referring to the Seaboard Street and Harbour Street strips located close to Falmouth Port, where scantily clad females plied their trade nightly. We have been doing night operations focusing on these sex workers. We recognize that they pose a public safety threat, so we have been doing frequent operations around them, DSP Milton stated. Right now, those we need to be broadening the scope of the operation, like including other agencies. We are also looking at the support base, such as the vendors who support sex workers in their endeavors. We have been focusing on these vendors, he added. The senior cop stated that pressure is also being applied to males who play a role in facilitating the prostitution in Falmouth. There are some men who supervise or provide protection for them. We have also been focusing on them. The intention is to make the environment difficult for these kind of illicit activities. We are not where we want to be, but we have placed a significant dent in the operation, DSP Milton told reporters. He explained that his team's success has driven some of the ladies to the night underground. We know that some of them have been hiding in various places. That's why we want to widen the scope of our operations. So, whereas they used to operate overly on street corners, Seaboard Street, Harbour Lane, we figure that some of them may have gone into hiding and are operating from clandestine areas. So, we are doing the necessary work in relation to this so that we can pursue them at the DSP Milton. Concern about the loss of lives, Mayor of Falmouth Council C. Junagaja agreed that the sex trade cannot be allowed to continue in the historic town. We had a meeting Thursday morning and the police are working with us. We have been having regular meetings to see if it was said that is carrying out these and to make the place safe and secure, stated the mayor. We have cameras there. If you come out during the night, you will see the ladies in their special clothes that they are wearing at the time of the night, honestly. I must say that the police have been working overtime with us on it, but we need to put down our foot. We need to all work and sing the same sankey that says, listen, we won't tolerate this because this has led to at least three lives being lost, Gaja added. He was referring to the fatal stabbing of two men in separate incidents on Seaboard Street in January. 24-year-old laborer Solomon Minto from Wakeland Drive in Falmouth has been charged in connection with the murders of 44-year-old Noel Ness of Water Lane, Falmouth, and Joel Curry of Marta Bray, both in Trelawney. The Falmouth police also took a suspect into custody in connection with the fatal stabbing of a man during a dispute 
on Seaboard Street in the wee hours of Saturday, May 18. The deceased was identified as 25-year-old Ricardo from Hague Settlement in Trelawney. The police's theory is that Minto and the suspect in the other murder provided security for the prostitutes who operate in the area. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.